have a good day. Warning, when conducting fun and exciting science experiments, always make sure to do your research so at the end of the day, you're conducting your science experiments properly and thoroughly. In addition to conducting your science experiments under the proper supervision, always make sure to utilize safety equipment such as gloves, eye protection, and this sweet hazmat suit. So at the end of the day, while you're having fun with science, you are also safe. Thank you and enjoy. LA Beast here, and 21 years ago I received an 8x10 autographed photo from Bill Nye the Science Guy, in which he specifically told me, science rules. And from that day, until right now, as I'm sitting here talking to you, I cannot disagree with that statement. So all that I plan on doing today, even though I'm 76.9% sure of what the fuck I'm doing, is conduct the best of the best science experiments that I've compiled from the internet for your entertainment. Why? Because O'Doyle rules, and so does science. So without further ado, in no particular order, I am going to attempt some of the most visually awesome, crazy science experiments that I've compiled here from YouTube. And of course, I like to give credit where credit is due. So to everybody in the science community here on YouTube, thank you for the inspiration. Have a good day. Now what I have here in my hand is a Rubik's Cube to the normal human being, uh, it's a puzzle that seems like it's impossible to solve. Uh, but that is not what we're going to do today. Uh, I actually learned from fellow YouTuber Brusspup a cool thing called anamorphic illusions. We're gonna put this Rubik's Cube down on the table and let's take another look at it. Uh, and this one is actually an anamorphic illusion, which is pretty crazy. Like this is, this is it. This is what an anamorphic illusion is. Uh, so as you turn it back around, put it back in place, boom, you again, you have. And it's all about the camera angle with this one. Uh, you have to like be the right angle. There you go. Anamorphic Rubik's Cube. And we have one shoe, one Chuck Taylor looking kind of shoe sitting here on the table. As you can clearly see, as you can clearly see, it's just blah, it's just, it's just a shoe on a piece of paper that looks like a shoe even though it's not a shoe, which is pretty cool. That's actually pretty, looks pretty legit. And finally, we have a roll of blue tape, uh, which when you go up closer, you can actually see that when you s turn it around, it's pretty crazy. This is not a roll of tape, but it does. Boom, now it looks like a roll of tape sitting on the table. Uh, there. Yep. Anyway, if anybody would like to try this out for themselves, uh, check out Brus Pup Anamorphic Illusions. Uh, you need 8.5 by 14 inch paper. And when you watch the video, it, you figure out how to cut the shapes out and everything. So it's fun. It's a fun, cool experiment that you can paste to your Twitter, or Instagram, Facebook, whatever. So check it out. Now these next two science experiments involving eggs I learned from Steve Spangler's science here on YouTube, uh, and hopefully they, they go well. For this one, it's called the egg drop. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take these uh, empty toilet paper rolls, some eggs, four pint glasses full of water, and this plate. Uh, and I'm going to set up the eggs over each glass like so. And then hopefully knock the plate, knock the plate out, and the eggs are going to drop into the pint glass full of water. So let me get this set up. Now, and again, you're gonna need some proper eye protection, some supervision when you conduct this experiment. The egg drop. Ah! if you have flat feet and you distribute your weight equally on a dozen eggs, you can actually walk on eggs. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. And I guess people say, I don't want to walk on eggshells when I'm dealing with somebody else. But you know what? Literally, I'm about to try and walk on eggshells. And just safety, eye safety. Let's do this. LA Beast, I'm about to walk on some eggs. That didn't, that didn't work, okay, that one didn't work. 
Let's try this one. Okay, great. Uh, apparently, as a 240 pound man, I cannot walk on eggshells. Uh, this experiment involves a chemical reaction between Coca Cola and calcium hypochlorite, which is also chlorine that you put in your swimming pool. But I must stress, do not try this at home as it's dangerous. I have proper safety gloves, eye protection, and all I'm going to do is fill this beaker with Coca-Cola right now, and then dump in some calcium hypochlorite, and let's see what happens. And the reason why I'm putting this beaker into this bowl is because it is going to get very messy very fast. All right, so here we go. Coca-Cola chlorine reaction. Oh boy, there we go. Holy shit! Do not try this at home. Uh, I need to open up. Let's get the vent. Let's get the ventilation. Oh. Yeah. Technically, this is not a science experiment, but I wanted to show you how to take a one dollar bill. Uh, like so, and turn it instantly into a $20 bill. So all you gotta do, take a crisp $1 bill, fold it in half once, fold it in half again, and back down. And boom, and so you just take it, one, two, three, presto change and you turn that $1 bill into a $20 bill instantly. Just like so. Let's show you how it's done. Now pretty much you start off with a $1 bill, but you also have a $20 bill, and this is the way you have to fold it. You have to fold it from left to right, again, and then you fold it down. So this is, that's the final product. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna actually place it in the back corner of the bill. And your thumb, this thumb is going to be holding on to the $20 bill. So when you fold it over, you kind of grab it like this, but your thumb, your thumb is actually still clamped on to that that $20 bill there, and then boom. So you show the viewer front and back, but the $20 bill never moves from that back corner position. So as you fold it in half once, you fold it half again, and then back down. Uh, in the back, you have the $20 bill ready to go. And what I've done, I've, I've added a cool thing. I have some double-sided tape on my hand. So when you, all you gotta do is Presto change it, and boom. You did. Well, you have. Here's a one dollar bill. Boom. Now it turns into a twenty dollar bill. But yeah, you do. My, I, I, I couldn't cut quite hide it. So if you saw the one dollar bill in my palm, uh, that was something new that I tried. But that's how you do it. Pretty cool trick. What I, what I have here in this little container, it's actually called ferro fluid. Pretty much what it is, it's like a, a laser jet ink, which has like tiny, minuscule magnetic particles in it. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a solution in this glass bottle, put in some ferro fluid, and show you exactly how this, this laser jet ink reacts to a magnet, which is actually pretty cool. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to fill this bottle halfway with water, halfway with rubbing alcohol, and then let's see what happens. Now let's take this pipette. Uh, be careful. Ferro fluid should really, you should be careful because it could definitely stain uh, your clothes. It can stain whatever workstation you're working with. And why not? Let's add a shit ton of ferro fluid. There we go. Now let's seal the bottle, add some magnets, and let's see what happens.
you can see, as you can see, the ferro fluid it is. It's like it gets very like spiky, very domey. Yeah, there we go. Wow, it's pretty cool. It's just this is like laser, laser jet printer toner that reacts with magnets. Let's see what happens if we add all of the ferro fluid. Okay, that's that's a lot of ferro fluid. Okay, that, that was pretty cool. That's ferrofluid. And just, it does. It's just like a giant, bleh, it's just a giant blob of ink. And then all you, you just let it go, boom. Ferrofluid. Now after I 100% totally f this one up, this is the disappearing glass science experiment. And all you need is some vegetable glycerin oil and you do, you just fill up a beaker and I'm going to pour some into this glass and then I'll do a close up of when I dunk it into this beaker, the glass shall disappear. So let's do this. We have a glass. I'm going to see if this glass disappears when I go like this. I can't even. Now I, and now I just have fucking glycerin fat all over my hands. All right, next, next experiment. This is the glycerin glass disappearance. Yeah, okay. Fuck, I'm trying to make it reappear. Okay, not working. There we go. Disappearing glass, Fuck. And last, but not least, as it's approaching 4 a.m. in the morning because that last science experiment that you're not seeing here on this tape today, didn't fucking work. So what I'm going to do is use this geyser and demonstrate how a diet soda and Mentos, the surface of the Mentos has these round little tiny craters which interact with the phosphoric acid from the soda and create a geyser. And all you do is you attach it ever so neatly, ah, nice and tight onto the bottle. Unscrew it. In this one, we are going to need safety goggles. And then you just take a pack of Mentos. Uh, let me just make sure, okay. Take a pack of Mentos, dump it on it. Okay. That one didn't work. Let's, let's try one more. Uh. I have, I have Pepsi in my goggles. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to launch these seven Mentos into this Diet Pepsi. And then I'm just, we're just gonna have a Diet Mentos fountain here in the garage. I'm gonna try and drink as much of it as I possibly can. LA Beast. Good day. What the fuck I do? I just got Diet Pepsi rocket just up my nostrils. So that's it. I am the LA Beast, and science 
I hate you. I'm, I'm Now I'm 